Hello everyone, um, in this video what I'm going to be showing you here is the, the a lab environment that I was playing with uh, connecting two uh, express route regions together uh, to achieve connectivity and then um, I want to show you how I enable global reach so that um, the Washington DC data center can talk to the Seattle um, data center via the Microsoft Backbone. So this, um, this feature is available and it's been available for, for a long time and I haven't been able to test this out and I wanted to get a feeling around how that works, uh, which, is, which is really cool. And um, I'll, what I want to do in this video is share that experience uh, with you, any of you guys if you, if, if you don't get that chance to um, lap this up um, in your own environment. And if you're thinking of doing that in, in production environments, then um, this is uh, what you're going to... This is the experience that you're going to get uh, when you actually do it in, in production. So without talking too much on it, um, let's go through that. So this is what I'm going to do on the orange line, um, the, the global reach piece that I'm going to create. But first of all, uh, let me actually uh, go through this setup here and then uh, show you what I have configured so far. So as you can see, um, I have two express routes in here, one in um, Washington, D.C. and the other one's in Seattle. And uh, both them of both of them are provisioned and they are all connected to a virtual network in uh, in each of these Azure regions. Uh, so the Washington DC is going to the East US um, um, region and then uh, uh, Seattle is going to the West US 2 uh, data, uh, data center. So those are all connected um, as, as shown in this diagram. And uh, as, you, as you saw, um, we, we, I will show you in this express route connection side, there are there are two connections in each express route. That's because they are one, one going to the, the local uh, data center and the other one's going to the regional data center, as you can see here. So one's going to the local, one's going to the regional one. So uh, similarly, it's, uh, they are cross-connected now. So uh, what I want to show you is uh, if I go to the other express route as well, I can see two express route connections uh, connected to these ones. So that's all uh, done. So let's do some uh, testing. Um, so from Washington DC, um, what I want to do is basically from Washington DC, I want to first uh, ping and see this, this virtual machine here and, um, and then make sure that it's reachable first. So let's quickly do, um, yes, yeah, so ping 10.10.17.4. Uh, is that virtual machine and I can see that the latency is pr very minimum and um, that's that's communicating to that one so successfully so that's all connected and now let's go ahead and uh, can try and connect to the other um, region here so from Washington DC let's go and talk to the West US 2 data center which is um, which is which has a different IP so let's go 10. Um, 17.17.4 so that will be the West US 2 and as you can see there's like a 60 millisecond uh, latency on that one but um, it's also a successful communication so that's all because I have now cross connected and if I go to the other data center I'll, I'll experience the same way and uh, what I will not be able to communicate is from Washington DC to Seattle so let's give it give that a shot um, so that one is ping.10.3.17.10. So that IP address is not going to be able to communicate because um, because these express routes won't allow you to go this way. So that's the only way you can enable from your on-premises data center to another on-premises data center is by using this uh, global reach connection. So which we're going to create that in a minute. Um, so at the moment, as you see, it's all cloud to cloud. So I'll do some testing from Seattle as well. So let's quickly go jump to the uh, Seattle server and then let's quickly do um, to the West US2 data center, so which is the local region. Um, let's quickly do that. And as you can see, there's five milliseconds latency on that side, uh, which is pretty good. And let's do quickly to the ES, uh, East US data center. So 10.10.17.4. And as you can see, that's like a 73 millisecond latency there. Um, so that hope hope that makes sense on that side. So what I what I'm gonna do now is basically go into this and then um, I want to show you quickly 
about the concept of this um, the global reach. So this, this article explains about the global reach concepts. Uh, so this is the setup that I have currently, and what I don't have the ability is to reach from uh, from one data center to another on-premises data center. So you, you need to enable global reach for that. So what that basically does is it it allows you to connect the two express routes together, uh, which by which passes the traffic from one region to the other, and uh, that enables scenarios where if you have multiple express routes from different regions in around the world, and if you have your local data centers, then you can use Microsoft Backbone as a connectivity method to connect all of your data centers together, as well. Uh, so that's um, so that's that's basically you can do that with standard uh, express routes. Um, if if your uh, if your local data centers are within the same geopolitical region in Azure terms, I'll get to that in a minute. What are the geopolitical regions? And if they are in t different geopolitical regions, then you need Express Route Premium to connect them to each other. So that's what it, it says in here. And uh, currently, a, um, a global reach is supported in these regions. Not all the regions are supported. For instance, South Africa is not in there. And then um, uh, India is not there as well, as you can see. And uh, geopolitical regions. So there's something called these geopolitical regions in Azure, where if they are in the same geopolitical region, then that means you can use a standard express route to connect them each, connect them to each other. So for instance, in my case, I have the West US 2 data center and then East US 2 data center. Uh, they, are, they can be connected with the standard express route and you will see my express routes are all standard, uh, not, not using premium at all. Um, so they are all standard express routes. So that's, so having said that, so let's how how do we enable global reach? Is there's an article on that um, on how to configure Express Route Global Reach? It's basically um, you can't do that using the Azure portal. You have to use the PowerShell commands for that, and uh, it's it's basically enabling a peering between the two Express Route circuits. So you're adding a um, Express Route circuit con connection config, and then you add a, add a peering together. And, uh, and then you update the express routes. So that's what uh, we need to do. Um, so going, uh, I have done this, uh, the PowerShell commands before. So I'm just gonna run these power, two PowerShell commands to basically add and uh, do the connection to, to it. Okay, now that's been completed. Let's go back to the Azure portal and then go to the express routes here. And then let's check the the, the effective or the routing table that uh, that you can see in the um, in the express routes. So I just want to show you that uh, there will be some published IPs uh, from these peerings that we just created. So the peerings um, subnets that we basically provided is is this. Um, and if you probably can see some of these ones here, these are coming from the uh, from the uh, from the um, the local express route peering itself. And as you can see here, like we can see all the the two regions um, getting advertised uh, via this. So this one is um, so this one is via the express route, the normal typical local express routes. And this this region here is this IP address here is coming from the remote region via the global reach um, uh, capabilities. So that's been done. Let's do a bit of quick testing um, to see if it's actually working. So this this was he here, like we couldn't, we couldn't reach um, those two IP addresses because uh, from Washington DC, we were not able to ping this um, uh, Seattle data center. Now let's have a look um, if it's reachable or not. So you can see now with the 69 second um, millise millisecond um, latency, we can reach this um, server in Seattle. So which is which is uh, now global regions in play. Um, so it's it's communicating from data center to another data center using the Microsoft Backbone is what you just witnessed. Um, so that's having said that. So as you can see here, these ones are all Azure. Uh, IP ranges and there are multiple paths now to get to those ones. So basically you can c use the direct connection to the gateway. These are the active passive gateways that you're seeing. 
and then you can also get to the um, other peering um, or other reach and express route using the global reach and then get to that and then go into the region as well what i mean is like when you have global reach in here for this seattle server to reach to the um, east us server you have one part like this and the other part like this so there are multiple parts in that side and as you can see that those are the parts that's uh, that's why they have like three listed in here and uh, they use the the local preference or the waiting feature basically so in in, in that case you should basically say uh, you need to have a higher weight on the preference um, uh, part if you have something uh, then then it will always prefer that part in terms of the preference side of things so yeah that's that's what i wanted to show you hope uh, you got something out of it and that's how you basically see like you all what you see is like uh, advertised bgp routes in in each one of these um, connections in the express route so that's what essentially what a global reach enables so it will um, it will enable that bgp propagation of your on-premises data centers to each other and then it will use express route as a backup path for your um, for your network or over the microsoft backbone um ho hope it was informative and then um yeah um i'll catch up with you in another video